All right, welcome back. Uh, so we were just talking about how uh, now all of a sudden the left-wing media wants to be apologists for people like Sam Bankman-Fried uh, and others. Um, and it's not classy, says MSLSD host uh, Ari Melber, if they uh, go after Hunter Biden. Um, to break this down a little further, uh, I'm joined now by the president of Accuracy and Media, Adam Gallette along with founder and president of PragerU, Dennis Prager. Uh, guys, let's start with the New York Times puff piece on Sam Bankman-Fried. They actually have a long history of covering for some pretty bad dudes. In the case of Bernie Madoff, these headlines from 2020 let Bernie Madoff and many more out of prison back in 2009, the talented Mr. Madoff. And uh, this is a doozy. After New York Democrat Anthony Weiner was caught sending pictures of his junk to women while in bed with his son, the Times published this headline, Why I Admire Anthony Weiner. Um, and today, I would doubt that the Times admires him very much very with much. the many admissions he's had. But, uh, Adam, why is it that the Times covers for these kind of people like Sam Bankman-Fried and Anthony Weiner? Well, money talks. You know, the Times rarely can find a billionaire that they like. But what has this guy done? He gave $40 million to Democrats in the midterm elections. By way of comparison, I looked up their recent coverage of Elon Musk, page after page after page of results attacking the guy. And what a contrast. Elon Musk suddenly becomes a free speech advocate. He purchases Twitter. He announces he's voting for a Republican. They slam him left and right. This guy commits fraud, but it's okay because he gave $40 million to the left. It's disgusting. $40 million that we know of. Uh, Dennis, the New York Times, on the other hand, has no problem vilifying innocent people that align with Republicans. The case of Nick Sandman, they defamed him simply because he was wearing a MAGA hat, Kyle Rittenhouse. Um, who could forget how badly the media treated him? Uh, why is it that they're allowed to have such bias towards Republicans? Well, I don't know what, what, what allowed means. When I was a kid, the, the New York Times was generally respected by Republicans and Democrats. And now it's only respected by people who agree with the left. The the deterioration of the New York Times has been uh, stupendous. Uh, it, it's depressing, actually. Uh, almost every institution in the country that we revered, the American Medical Association, the American Bar Association, the universities, I mean, think about it. The New York Times, like every other institution of the left, has lost credibility with those who love truth. It's not even a matter of do you agree with the left or the right, do you, do you just love truth? Your, the, the point that was just made about Elon Musk is, is dispositive. The, the man was considered a genius, which he is, by the way, and then he comes out for free speech on Twitter and they hate his guts. Because, as I pointed out and do almost every day on my radio show, every time the left is in power, whether it's at a college or the Russian Revolution, it has not changed since 1917, they suppress dissent. And uh, I just I'll just want to add one quick more other point. Uh, I, I have a large audience of young people through PragerU, and one asked on, on a fireside chat I do each week. So, Dennis, how do I know who's telling the truth and who's lying? And I said there is one really one only one foolproof way. Those who wish to suppress dissent and censor are the ones who are lying. That's a, that's a good rule of thumb, I would imagine. Adam, uh, I wanted to ask you, when the Times ignored the Twitter files, Musk uh, summed it up best, I think. He tweeted out, the New York Times has become, for all intents and purposes, an unregistered lobbying firm for far-left politicians. Do you agree with that statement? Well, that's what we talk about all the time at Accuracy in Media. These are no longer journalists. They are activists. And beyond that, they are fan fiction activists. They simply tell their audience what that audience wants to hear. It's a business model that has worked for them. It's a business model MSNBC follows. They tell these people what they want to hear. If they said a favorable story about Trump, even if it was true, their audience wouldn't click on it. If they say Trump's getting arrested tomorrow, click here for the details, their audience 
audience can't click fast <laughs> enough. <laughs> so simply up. they promote propaganda pieces that these folks want to read. Dennis, what do you make of this Ari Melberg guy over there at MSNBC claiming that now Hunter Biden investigation wouldn't be classy? Um, uh, they're running cover for him now, too? Classy should weigh into it, whether it was a violation Look, if, of the law? If, if 51 heads of American intelligence agencies could sign a statement a month before the 2020 election, presidential election, that the Hunter Biden laptop was Russian disinformation, then what do you expect from MSNBC? <laughs> That's a good point. Well, hopefully we'll see some of those 51 in front of Congress. And I think one of the best takes on it I heard somewhere on the network was um, Twitter, you don't hear any outcry from the left to allow people back on Twitter um, because none of them were banned. They, they're all just freely still on there. But, uh, Adam, your final take on this stuff? Well, it's exactly what you'd expect from MSNBC. This, talking about his drug use endlessly, I agree, that's not classy. But what also isn't classy is selling your dad's influence to foreign AI, um, companies for cash. That's a major problem, a major crime. And if they were a news outlet, that would be a major story. But their base doesn't want to hear it. And I never want to be lectured about class from a network that employed Al Sharpton, by the way. My gosh. That's true. And, and, and by the way, you know, I think um, the Oversight Committee tried to make this point early on. They keep referring to it as Hunter Biden investigation. What the real investigation is, was Joe Biden the big guy and was he compromised when he had the controls of our government second in command as vice president and otherwise? So I hope they keep that point straight. But Adam Gillette, Dennis Prager, thank you very much. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for having me.